in chapter six, we're starting to look at something called factoring. So to talk about factoring, uh, let's think about a couple of examples here. We have five times three equals 15. You know, we have a couple of different expressions here. And I say that if we take, um, for instance, three x minus one times x plus five, it's equal to this thing. So if we're going to the right, we would generally refer to this as simplifying. So simplifying usually involves doing things like getting rid of parentheses. Um, and ultimately when you simplify, you're, if you're getting rid of all the parentheses, think about the order of operations here, the last operations are the ones that, that um, the last operations that tend to occur when we simplify something, if we're getting rid of all the parentheses, tend to be addition and subtraction, because those are the last, uh, that's the last part of the order of operations. If we're talking about trying to um, trying to factor, then really what we're after is not thinking of this as a sum, which when I say we're thinking of this, you know, where the last operations are addition and subtraction, you can think of this as a sum. You talk about the individual terms. If we're talking about trying to factor it, then what we what we really want is the last operations to be multiplication. So inevitably, when we're talking about factoring something, we'll, we're we're just about always going to have parentheses in it. Um, up here, you can see if we factor 15. We got three times five. This is not you know, doesn't require any parentheses, but when we're dealing with polynomials, we do. If you have five y minus twenty-five, and I say to factor it, we get five times y plus five. You can see we do our addition somewhere in here, but the last operation to take place is multiplication. The last operation to take place here was multiplication, and again, this multiplication here is the last operation to take place. So that's kind of our end goal: is to allow uh, the end goal of factoring is to allow us to think of these as a product as opposed to a sum. All right, um, you can think of it as undoing multiplication or sometimes you can actually do division using factoring. <clears throat> All right, so in any case, let's uh, first talk about the, um, the greatest common factor. So this is our first, uh, this is leading towards our first factoring technique. Uh, if you're trying to find the greatest common factor of two integers, we saw this way back in chapter one, um, to find the greatest common factor of two integers, I, I recommend we think of the prime factorization. So 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And actually, I'm going to take this one step further, and I'm going to write this as 2 squared times 3. So I have two copies of the 2 and one copy of the 3. 18 is 2 times 3 times 3, so it's 2 times 3 squared. So I have two copies of the 3 and one copy of the 2. The greatest common factor here to find the greatest common factor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through all of the, so I shouldn't write the two down yet, I should look down, look through all of the different uh, bases here and say, okay, what what is the least amount of times that they happen? So um, in this case, this two happens only once. So my greatest common factor is only going to have a two in it once. Uh, for the threes, the threes happen at, at, um, at least once. So my greatest common factor has exactly one copy of a 3 in it. And you can see my greatest common factor here must be 2 times 3. What's going on here is I'm basically saying 2 is a factor of both of these. But 2 squared is not a factor of both of these. So um, when I'm trying to find the greatest common factor, I'm trying to figure out all of the, the, the common prime factors that I can pull out of each of these. This one says I can pull out 1, 2. I could pull more 2s out of that one, but I'm limited by this one. Uh, this one says I can only pull out one three. And again, I could pull more threes out of the second number, but I'm limited. I can only pull one three out of the first number. So those both kind of individually give me limits. So my greatest common factor here was six. And there are definitely other ways of looking at the greatest common factor. You could say, what's the largest number that evenly divides both of those? Ultimately, that's what the greatest common factor is. But this technique um, right here is the way that I'm, it's the way that you're going to want to look at this for finding the greatest common factor of polynomials. All right, so let's do 32. Uh, 32 is, well, that's actually a fact of uh, um, a power of two. That's two to the fifth. If you don't happen to recognize that, you could do your whole, um, factor tree if you want, 2 times 16, 4 times 4, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, there's 5 2's there, you can see we get 2 to the 5th. So however you end up getting this prime factorization, doesn't. it's not really that important. Um, let's see, 40 is 8 times 5, and I recognize 8 is 2 cubed, so we get 2 cubed times 5. So that means our greatest common factor, 
I'm going to look through each of the, the primes, each of the bases, and say, oh, what is the least number of times they occur? Um, this one has five copies, this one only has three, so that one's the, the one that limits me. For fives, the least number of times the five occurs is up here. There are no fives for that one. So it's not part, it's not a common factor at all. So my greatest common factor of these two numbers is eight. If you're looking at this and thinking about the least common multiple, uh, the least common multiple is a very common, a very uh, similar technique to what I'm doing here for finding the greatest common factor. The least common multiple, so just kind of if you're thinking of that, we would take whichever ones occur the most. So this one would be 2 squared, this one would be 3 squared, so the least common multiple here is 9 times, oops, uh, 9 times 4, which is 36. So the least common multiple of these is 36. We're talking about the greatest common factor, though. Um, and the least common multiple and the, and the greatest common factor are certainly related to one another, but we're specifically looking for the greatest common factor right now. Or if we want to find the greatest common factor of 9 and 16, 9 is 3 squared, 16 is 2 to the 4th, and the greatest common factor, I'm going to look through all of the individual bases, 2 does not occur in this one, and 3 does not occur in that one, so it looks like they don't have anything in common, my greatest common factor is actually 1 here, that's the largest number that will evenly go into either, to both of them I should say.